Hello, good morning everyone. Happy Thursday. Hope you're doing well today. This is my fourth time live this week. So, woo! Taylor's, you should check your eyes. <laughs> All these lights, four times in one week. I know, yeah. it gets hot behind these uh, these lights. Yeah. And, and it's a little bright. So. It is, it is. <laughs> good morning. Uh, let's see who's here today. Hi, Debbie. Hello, Dev is here from Illinois. We have Marilyn and Paula. Those names in red are kind of hard to read. They are. They? I can't honestly yeah. read them. And I feel like I'm moving my face closer. Yeah. Is that just a sign of age? Sorry. Okay. But hey, it's the alternative. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. You want to get older. So far, I don't yes. have the reading glasses yet. But No, I do. Judging oh. by right now, having to move in closer. See, I can read the blue names just fine. I think it's just the red ones. It's the red ones, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And the red ones are the YouTube ones, I think. And then the blue yep. is, yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep, wow. exactly. We are just great conversationalists this morning. We're just rocking it. <laughs> it's beautiful outside. How about that? It is. It's a gorgeous day, day gorgeous. today. Excited about that. So... Yeah, um, I'm excited about what you get to share today. I am too. Which is our Throwback Thursday release and the Perk Up kit yes. from last year is uh, now being offered. Many of the pieces are being offered separately from the kit that was released in January, I think, of last year. So yeah, it's it been a popular. little bit. It was a yeah. very popular kit last year. And um, so now I you can it. get those individual pieces. You can stock up. I know some people have been waiting to get a second set of dies so that they can cut out more coffee cups from the background oh, at the same time. Oh, you people Yeah, are somebody on in the it. studio told me that, that she was going to grab an extra set of the three coffee cups so yeah, that she could cut not more a bad of them. Price. Yeah, it's not yeah. Uh, too spendy for those. And then I know... Everybody's excited about the add-ons too, I so Susan's going to talk about that. And a throw way back to a tool that we used to have in our oh, craft Oh yeah, rooms. that's a throw way back. Yes. I'll wait till I show you. I'm so excited. Susan's going to show, show you that. It's kind of a bring back for us. It's something that I just could never get rid of. Me too. It was in a, in a bottom drawer. And now we have a reason and a purpose, and I think it's kind of going to make a comeback. It. I'm just going to get it. Okay, because we got to do it. this. It kind of matches me too. Who remo too. It does. All right, are we ready? Are Who ready? else has one of these in their Whoa, collection? Oh, hanging out. <laughs> I can't find mine. I know I have oh, really? it. I can't find mine. Well, lucky for you, have we mine. have yeah. one at the store now. Yeah. So Susan's going to show any, you. Who can say it? What is it? Do you have it? Yes. What is this? If you have it. I know it kind of might look like yeah, a torture device. Don't get your finger caught in there while you're um, while bad, you're twisting. Bad idea. <laughs> I think my, but I do feel like my um, uh, big shot has injured me worse than this thing <laughs> true, ever did. True, true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that. Crimper. We've got oh, yep. uh, lots of people that have a crimper. Don't know where mine is either. Me, That's what Lauren me. says. So yes, a crimper. Yeah paper crimper. These are the things that uh, kind of haunt me. The things that you end up getting rid of and then later you're like, well, I know I had uh -huh. one of those. And then... 100%. Yeah. But honestly, until just recently, my crimper has just, you know, enjoyed its home in the drawer. And now I finally could say, I'm not a saver either. So most of my stuff, if it's not being used, but for some reason, just this one thing had that little bit of nostalgia and like I can't get rid of this. No, so. I I know I didn't get rid of it. I just cannot place it. I know I came <laughs> across it is. last spring when I was really purging, um, yes. but I remember tucking it away. I I didn't get rid of it. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope. So um, I've seen some uses for it recently, and Susan's going to show you a couple samples today, or at least one sample yeah, today. One. Did I know. Heather use it a few weeks ago? Or was she crumpling? That's oh, she, the old thing yeah, she was doing. She yeah, she crumpled her paper, like <laughs> sprayed it and wet it and then crumpled it. Um, Did that that's another way back uh -huh. technique. So, yep. yes. So we're bringing back the crimper today. And I think it's fun to do just on backgrounds. You know, we used to make it like almost corrugated paper that mm -hmm. you just place behind your image. Can't you imagine like splattering yeah. it up and making oh, yeah. it look kind of rustic and... I'll send a crimper to Heather if she doesn't have one, and she'll show us how to make it rustic and Rust, splattered yep. and 
yep. in toffee. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Well, yeah, that's what you uh, would use it. Now with we've muffin. got everybody wondering. I where wonder my... where my crimper is. I sold mine at a yard sale last fall. Oh, oh no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. Maybe, uh, maybe you're okay without yours. But if you never had a crimper, maybe you're a newer crafter because. I feel like crimpers were all the rage like maybe 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. They were. Um, so maybe if you're a newer crafter and you're looking for one, we did bring a version into the Tailored Expression store. The Fiskars version is not available through our distributor. So we have the Marvi Uchida version. If you want to pull that, you want to show them what it looks like. So when they go on the website, they they know that what they're seeing is uh, the right thing. Mm -hmm. So this I'll does use the, this one. So it functions slightly differently, but. Works the same. Yeah, it still has the, the mm -hmm. turny knob yep. and yes. So that's what we have at the TE store. Yeah. And I know Louise in the studio is using it in their make and take next week. So those of you that live close by, you can come and actually get your hands on the crimper and use it for the make and take. So I've seen it's coming back for the hair even. Did you have one? Yes, I have I one. Have. Oh, you still I, have I still do. Like the new yes. or the old version? The new version. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, I I get, got rid of my old version, but... Yes, my girls, you know, they have all those theme days at school. Okay. And so we bought a crimper specifically to give them something to do for like 80s day or... Cute. Yeah. Cute. It's coming back. <laughs> All right, well, enough about crimpers. Uh, Susan's gonna get started sharing some samples using the throwback items, Yay. and you get to be crafty together. Yay! So have fun. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Well, not me. Bye, Taylor. <laughs> bye, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, bye, Taylor. You not have me. To stay. You, yeah, I must stay. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious? We both just peace out. Like <laughs> we're we're gone. Uh, I have lots of fun samples in front of me for you and we'll kind of walk through some of them. So in the original kit back when it was released, you received the perk up, which was a stencil and a stamp combo. So you had the stamp that made all of the handles and then you had the, and some of the, and the patterns I should say. And then you had the three piece stencil that you could make the different colors for your cups, which I think is so cute. And then there was the cup of Joe and actually that's the card I'm gonna make today is with the cup of Joe. And then a cute little perk up where you could cut some of the cups out, which some genius person I guess is gonna buy a second set so they can cut out more. And then just a few extra details if you wanted to put just special things on your cup or I know in the past people made huge backgrounds or full backgrounds with the coffee beans. So that is what was in the kit. So if you go on the website under the Throwback Thursday, um, uh, sorry, I was reading a quick comment that caught my eye. Uh, I will talk you through shakers and I will be very slow about it. And I love, thank you for the comments on my hair. Uh, when I have my hair done, the lady likes to straighten it and I just love it when she does it, it's perfect. When I do it, it takes me an hour and it's really not perfect. So I love it when she does it. So, um, but this was in the original kit, of course, with your zipper bag and stuff. Uh, and also there was the sentiments and coordinating dies and those have been on our website for some time now. They're still there along with the insiders, those have been around. And I also believe the um, uh, foilets, but those have been around and those have been on our website. They, all of this stuff will be under the Throwback Thursday on the website, but the new stuff, if you bought the kit and you bought the add-ons, the new stuff will say new. And these are the two new products. So, so that you don't have to use the little cute little coffee bean over and over again. We created a background for you. I think it's really cute. And then the whole sleeve and lid for the traveling cup we added. So those are um, new and it will say new. So when you go to the Throwback Thursday site. So let me walk you through. Again, this is again a new and that's these backgrounds. So this background, this card, this, I guess it's even in this one, but I won't hold on to that one. Let me get this stuff out of the way for you. This, this, the new background was created with these. I know for sure this one might have been the little stamp, 
but I know because when I created, I created this one and um, I, I know I used the background. I know Jill used the background on her little cups. And of course with Jill, we have the stitching and around the outside or the top and bottom, I should say. And then the googly eyes, are they not just adorable? Are they not so cute? I just, her and her shakers, I love, or her little shaky eyes, her little googly eyes, as she just thinks and like makes everything look alive. I think it's so cute. I'm seeing some more like, good morning, California. Good morning, Seattle. Awesome. And um, I love that you guys are excited about our throwback. Sometimes uh, some things come back, not always, but it's kind of fun when we bring some of the things back that everyone really loved. So let me, um, again, this was a Jill card with the googly eyes, but this was when it released and um, back when this whole cup of Joe thing released with the kit, Jill did that card. This card is new. I did this one. Um, we had blended a background when the kit came, uh, was available and I just went and I found it in our stash and I cut it out and I just rearranged re arranged it the way I wanted to. And I did use our Simple Strips Coffee. I believe that's also under the throwback, but that's been around for a while. Um, but it will be in the throwback if you're looking for it. Uh, and I just kind of arranged the cups. I used a flower set, now forgive me. I used a flower set that was released with a wedding released a ways back and I'm not gonna remember the name of it, I apologize. So, um, but I added just some little flowers here and there for the fun of it. Um, what circle did you die? Did I use? Oh, I'm hoping Whitney or someone, but it's a mini slim. Um, and it, we sell it in a square and a circle and I'm not going to remember the name of it. I apologize. It is on our website. Um, maybe if you searched mini slim would be the quickest way to find it, but it's all, we also sell it in a square. And if you guys haven't noticed, I'm obsessed with them. I love using them. So hopefully that means you like the card. Again, that was the flowers were, it was a little die set that we had released with wedding. So they're my favorite to add little flowers here and there. Um, and again, this is sour gummy, which is an obsession of mine right now. Guava and then cilantro are the colors I used on that one. This one was ink blended with pink champagne, guava, and a little bit of mulled wine. And then, like I said, it's this one I embossed it with gold to get the details of the cup on there. And um, yeah, cut them out, placed them kind of in a row. If you look really lightly, I did use a second generation stamping of, of the coffee bean background. So thank you, Paula, for going ahead and looking. I apologize that I don't have the exact name. So thank you. And if you find it, feel free to share the link in the comments. Uh, that always helps everyone else also. This, I'm going to show you a little bit about this, but again, I used the background and I used the new sleeve that that came with. Um, back to just some old samples because we always like to see them again. Taylor did a live with this one and she didn't make this background into a shaker, but she used uh, watercolor ink to create the coffee cup rings. This was also from the original when we did the kit way over a year ago. Um, coffee is the answer. I love that. I don't remember the question. I think that's hilarious. This one was made with the insiders and this was Lori Craig's and I think that's really cute. And then again, the stamp and stencil combo. I made this one and I had a lot of fun. This is with the uh, deco foil and mystic. And I remember that name because I'm terrible with remembering, you know, name sometimes of things as Paula was just asking. But this one is one of my all time favorite like rainbow foils because it's rainbow without being bright. Um, it's called Mystic, but it is one of the deco foil ones. It's not one of the TE ones, but um, I did that with the perk up foilets. So, uh, and this is my daughter 100%. She likes creamer, not so much coffee. So it always cracks me up when she has me make her coffee. She adds creamer and adds it and adds it. So let's get, those are some of the samples. Again, go back. And then if you purchase anything out of the throwback category, um, don't forget you'll get the My True Colors. I am really enjoying these. I've missed a couple, but that's my, bad on my part. So here is your 
friendly reminder, order something from that Throwback Thursday. It doesn't even matter if it's as small as a, a foilet. You will get these and they are so good to add to your stash. So anyway, yes, thank you. Everyone's saying that they put their hair through a crimper. It's funny. We have crimpers, we have straighteners, the things we do to our hair, right? Uh, thank you. You guys are so sweet. So, ah, she said, you look super stylish today. Thank you. I don't know. This is royal blue is my color and I love clothes, but I can't find it very often. So when I find it, I buy it. Um, so let's, I'm going to talk you through a little bit about this, the crimper and that sleeve. I'm not going to make this whole card because uh, I had intended to show you guys the shaker card today, but I wanted to walk you through this a little bit. So I already took the cup of Joe and I used the outer part, which you want both of these for making the shaker card that I'm going to make in a little bit. But I just used the outer one to make the traveling cup as it is. Uh, one tip that I have for you is, you know how we're really good about getting rid and sanding off all of these little connector pieces with the dies. When I have a die set like this that I want to use for a shaker, I do try to not get rid of every single bit of where those connected. So can you see, let me grab, I need like a white piece of paper that's not shiny. Let me grab, I'll just grab this. So can you see how I kind of, I didn't um, get rid of every single bit of those connector pieces. I feel like it makes it easier for you to line it back up when you use a shaker. But I will talk about that again when I get to that. I just wanted to show you that I did use this outer piece to make the shape of this cup. And I went ahead and die cut it ahead of time because I knew we were gonna be doing a few things today just to get it done. And I like to give dimension, especially when it's a toffee cup like this i like to add a little bit of extra toffee to the edges or if i were to do a white cup i might add a little bit of uh, a very light hand of toffee or a very light hand of sea salt is another good one for giving dimension to things like if you wanted a sugar cube cup but you wanted it to have a little bit of dimension around the side so i do go ahead and put just a little bit of color on that let me wipe up my surface here. I love everyone still saying, I love your hair. Uh, the other thing is the curls will be back. So they're still there. They're just uh, very, uh, very uh, tamed today. All right. So that's my cup. This little heart, I apologize. The only heart that I could find in my stash was that was separate from things because we have hearts that are like our wonky hearts and our little bits hearts, but they're all connected. So just go through your stash. TE throws a little heart die in a lot of things, uh, but that's the one that I chose. I wanted to put it down here in this corner of this cup. And uh, I assume one of the designers did it somewhere along the lines because I just thought it was really cute. So I just kind of placed it and I'll get a little piece of temporary tape and we will cut that. tape just to hold it in place and this is our scotch removable tape but being the ink blended and there's that'll make my cardstock a little bit wet I do like to put it on the back of my hand I'm gonna grab I'm just gonna cut this really quick put it through my machine I bet this would have fit through the mini the mini the little sidekick do you guys own one of those? I love those little, the little sidekick die cutters. So just to cut a little heart. And then I took a little scrap piece of our red foil cardstock to place it behind. And earlier I lost a bunch of stuff and it fell off the table. And I hope the red cardstock wasn't one of those things that went flying, flying somewhere that I've got to find it back, right? So I took a, just a little piece of our red cards red foil cardstock and I'm just going to glue that on the back so that that red shows through. I just thought it was a cute little add-on and like I said it wasn't my idea. I saw I think it was a designer's project that they did that. So that way you get just a little hint of red foil showing through. There we go. Put 
the magnet on it to hold it while that dries. Okay, and this, I keep laying my Barely Arts bottle down because it's actually getting low. It's actually getting low. Okay, so again in this die set, let me bring this back. In this die set, the, this is the cup and then the add-on to the cup of Joe's accessories you get this white or the what I would call like the sleeve to your coffee travel coffee cup and that piece and of course your lid this is also the small in this one is also the small sleeve for the small cup that's in the this was in the kit the cup of Joe's the accessories is new and that little sleeve is what I used on let me see if I can grab well Jill used it on this card and then I used it on these, but that's also in the accessories. If you want the, the little sleeve for the, even the smaller cup that's in the original die set that was in the kit. So you get both of them. So we'll let, I think that looks like it's pretty good. So the crimper, this is the old one. This is the one Taylor um, had in her office. So if you go and look, you might have one in your stash. Um, you always need to pay attention to which way you want, obviously, your crimp lines to go. And I went ahead and cut two pieces out of sugar cube so that I could show you the old Fiskars one that we can't get a hold of anymore. You have to squeeze the handle. So I always set my cardstock in it and you have to squeeze the handle and turn it to make it work, to run it through. If you just turn it, you're, you have no tension. You have to Put your paper I don't I know some people set their paper like in it I squeeze it and then kind of set my paper into one of the grooves that's the way I do it and then you turn it but if you have one of those find it in your stash or as you know like me I have to go and find it somewhere in my craft room I know I still own it the ones that we were able to source and find for you is by Marvy and this one there you do not have to squeeze there's no handle to squeeze so it is already tight for you. So set your paper in and then you just turn it. But again, the crimps are going the same direction if you were used to the Fiskars one and you got rid of it or whatever. But yeah, bringing the crimper back so that we can have our sleeve look like it does when you pick it up at the coffee shop. So, and if you run this one through it, like I said, it is already uh, no handle to squeeze. So that's kind of nice. You just run it through but that's the one we were able to find to source for you. So you'll take your sleeve, we'll put a little liquid glue. I'll use the one with the Marvy just so you can see that one. Sometimes it crimps it so much, it's a little tight on that cup, so I'm gonna flatten it out just a little bit. Let's grab some liquid glue. I find that's the best for a crimped product, just so I can make sure I have some adhesive hitting my cup. A little bit of glue like I said mine's getting low I can't believe it. I've been using this bottle I think here at the office for at least a year and a half I'm finally getting to the bottom of it so let's see that I got this going straight there we go isn't that so cute I might want to check and make sure I have it down far enough for the lid so that it makes sense yep I think we're good let's see I love using old vintage tools, isn't that fun? What's the weight of your envelopes? I cannot answer that, good question. Maybe if Charlie or Whitney are on, if you guys could answer that for me, that would be great. Stacy, I am with you, I need to find mine. They asked if I had mine, and I said, oh, I know I have it. I just did a big like clean purge reorganization of my stamp room last spring. I still have a corner that's not done. Does anyone else do that? You start and you don't get it finished. Um, but I got through most of it and I know I saw my crimper and I know I didn't get rid of it. It's somewhere. I just keep thinking like, I guess when I ran across it, do you know the terrible thought I had was, it's not worth anything. I'm not gonna like send it to Goodwill. No one's gonna want it. And I might need that again. So uh, yeah. So there's the lid. Sorry, I was trying to catch up on a few comments there. So that's how I crimped the cup. And let me bring my finished card back in. I said, drink your coffee, it's chaos out there. I thought that would be fun to send to my friend that has a new job. I thought 
thought that's cute. So, um, and again, I very simply finished this card by stamping toffee on toffee cardstock for the background. And then I used a stitched rectangle to cut a cherry pop cardstock and then also just a piece of Oreo that I thought would kind of set things off and kind of set off my sentiment there. So anyway, find your crimper or if you've gotten rid of yours, we did source one from Marvie to bring in here. So, um, sorry, Whitney's answering a question. I'm always trying to catch up on questions here. Let me get to what I had intended to chat with you guys about today is making um, this cup, the cup of Joe that originally came in the kit. Uh, when the kit came out, we were having so much fun with the stamp and stencil combo. I didn't feel like many people used the actual shaker cup. So I thought, even though this was originally part of the kit, so if you bought it, uh, you have it, uh, but now it's sold separately. So if you wanna buy it separate, you can. Anyway, I just thought it was cute, and I went and put it with our pierced uh, Ray's cutting plate in the background, because I felt like that whole like coffee, like drive it home, you can do it from coffee. So I'm gonna walk you through what I did with that. Let's go ahead and get the hard part out of the way. We'll go ahead and start by making this piece, this shaker. And I have some pieces. I move everything around like 10 times while I'm talking to you, and I lose cardstock in pieces. There we go. So I have a piece of toffee, and again, like I said, if you'll see, you can see that I didn't chop off my, like those little con connector pieces, the way the dies come in. I didn't get rid of it fully, and I do that on purpose because then it makes it a lot easier if you wanna place your die back together so that we can get this outer piece that we need for the cup. So what I'm gonna start with is cutting all of our pieces. I like to get all my pieces cut then it makes it a lot less likely that I'm gonna forget a piece of my shaker. I don't know, raise your hand. Have you ever forgotten the acetate while you're making a shaker? That is my biggest problem. I don't know why. I get so excited about adding the shaker bits that I just sort of forget that, oh yeah, I should add uh, that acetate to keep everything in. So, Sorry, I could tell I wasn't quite lined up up here. I wanted to redo it, so there we go. That looks better. And I am gonna put a little bit of extra teal tape right here um, just to keep my die together because we also need to cut a little bit of foam. So normally I don't use teal tape for die cutting, but I want, because this, I don't know, removable tape, they all have their place. But, and I use my teal tape when I stencil. I don't usually use it when I'm die cutting, but I wanna keep these two together. I want to make extra sure that both of these pieces stay together so that I can cut the foam after I'm done cutting this outer piece of my cup. So that looks even. I'm gonna send that through my die cut machine. Go ahead and bring that over because we're gonna cut a few things here. Send that through. Then I think if I have enough here, I'm going to go ahead and cut my handle. I always find it, I don't know why it's so difficult for me, but I always am struggling to get the handle going the right direction. So I will grab the inner piece from my cup and we'll cut the handle out of that instead. Let's grab that. And then the other thing we need to cut is our foam. So TE sells these awesome double-sided adhesive foam sheets. And I really like them for shaker cards when the it's really narrow like this is. Um, that might fit our eighth of an inch, but it's going to be very tight and I might see some of it. So I don't, if I'm doing one of these where the die kind of fits into each other, I usually reach towards grabbing our double-sided adhesive foam sheets. They're just really nice to cut. So let me get this out of here. Then we will grab this. I do like to cut mine down because these are, you get four sheets in your package. I like to get the most out of my sheets. 
and I'm going to just cut off a piece that I actually will use or that I'm actually going to use. So this is going to give us our height that we need for the, excuse me, let me get this in here, the height that we need for our shaker cards. The one thing is this is really like removable on both sides, so I usually have to struggle with getting it to stay in place. Let me get my head in here and kind of get that tape down. Okay. I think we're good. If it shifts a little bit, as long as I still have the edges, I'm fine. Okay, there we go. So that's now been cut. Our handle's been cut. So now I'm fine taking this apart because I need this outer piece and I need the foam piece to match. So that's why I was really used a little bit of extra teal tape to make sure those stayed together so that these two pieces would match. So let's pull this apart. Making sure I'm not missing anything. We won't need the center part of that foam, but you can, I always put it back in my packaging because I can use it for something. I'll find some use for it, even if I just cut it up for foam, like foam for things to lift things. Okay, so while I have my die cut machine here, the other two things that I need is I need my acetate and I need the backer to the cup. So this is where I will take this apart and I just need the back piece and we will cut a piece of, another piece of toffee. And then we will also cut, and you know what? I'm gonna cut, because if you notice in my card, I had the coffee beans in the background. I purposefully saved this, so I stamped a whole background, and I saved it after I made my sample, because I was like, well, I can get at least two cups of coffee out of that. Um, background so I saved it so I took the coffee bean background that's new and I stamped it with toffee on toffee cardstock so I'm going to cut that that background out of that and then the last thing we need to do is don't forget the acetate so that'll be the next one I cut and then we should be done die cutting for a little bit so there's the backer piece that we need then one more piece is we will cut the acetate. So I just need, TE sells window acetate sheets. It says they're 0 .007 inches thick. I really like the weight of these. They're not thin. They uh, seem to hold up pretty well. I don't get a lot of scratching out of them. Um, I really like them. I really like the weight of them. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. So let's run that through. Don't forget the acetate. That's, I don't know why. It's one of those things that I have forgotten way too many times. So every time I teach a class for a shaker card, I always say, don't forget the acetate. So let's cut the acetate. If some of you are on, I do not have a sneak peek this week. You have to come back this weekend. They want to keep you in great suspense. So let me just throw that out there. All right. I think we have everything that we need cut for now. Or if there is anything else, I've done some pre-cutting of a couple of things. So let's bring my card back in. And we will get the die cut machine out of the way. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just, I want to put together our cup. So we need some liquid adhesive. So I've got my Barely Arts glue. And then we will need our shaker bits. I chose to use the Snow Flurries. It's just kind of a mix. And then if you look really close, I also added some hearts. In this one, I've, if you look really close, can you see it? I put a little bit of glitter in there. Um, I think it was like... Um, I think it was Tim Holtz like it we sell a Tim Holtz product to that by Ranger that's just um, a white a little bit chunkier white glitter than our glitter our glitter is really fine this stuff's a little chunkier but you can't even really see it so I'm not I'm not gonna do it today because I was like what's the point I'm usually pretty big on putting chunky glitter in my shakers um, I don't, don't know why it just I really can't see it when it comes to the snow flurries 
And then I took our little bit hearts. I was showing you these earlier and I cut a bunch of them out of sugar cube and we are going to place those in there also. But the first thing that being as I've done it, I have done it so many times, forgotten the acetate. It is one of my things that I like to start with first, just so I don't forget. I personally like to use liquid glue. Everyone has their preference. I think Taylor likes to use tape runner. So it's completely a personal thing. So I'm going to put my little dots of glue. You could have used a sticky sheet if you didn't want to deal with putting down glue on this backer piece. You have lots of options. So all right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on. Something that we do here at TE quite often too is we take an alcohol wipe and we will wipe the acetate. Uh, just it gets rid of some of the static cling. It was a happy accident of something we came across. So I'm going to go ahead and hold that down just while that glues a little bit. Um, and then this will be will be what holds our shaker bits together. But I want to let this dry just a second. Um, I guess I did forget to cut our sentiment. I went ahead and while well, that's drying, I went ahead and embossed so that you didn't have to listen to my heat gun. I took VersaFine Claire and our clear TE embossing powder and I stamped, th these were the two sentiments I really liked, um, and I stamped them twice and just heat embossed them so I had them ready to go. I'm getting to the point that if I am going to stamp a sentiment, I try to do two or three or four of them and then I stick them in the little sleeve with my sentiments. Let me see, where did I go with my, I move everything and I wish I would just keep things organized the way I start, right? Or is that most of our stamping rooms? But then I hold on to my little extras and I will tell you if I'm in a hurry for a card, I really do appreciate those extras, but I've gotten to the point where I do do more than one, even though I don't even need it, but I'm going to use the creamer one today. Again, this reminds me of my daughter. Um, when they first started college, like as you guys know, I have twins. When they first started college, um, I gave them my Keurig because I wasn't using it anymore. I moved to a press thing that I use in the morning and I let them have it. And I bought them a, you know, I don't know, like 20 K cups or whatever. And they kept asking me for creamer, but I was like, don't you need K cups? And they were like, no, we're good. And then the next month they'd ask me for creamer again, but they never asked me for K cups. So finally one day when I was in their room, I looked and yeah, they were not really using their K cups. I mean, they were using them, but I think they were using like half a thing of creamer with every K cup. So it was funny, made me laugh, but why complain, right? They didn't make me buy them new uh, K cups, right? So I'm not going to put this fully in the screen, but I want to go ahead and cut Cut the sentiment quick while I'm waiting for that to dry. Should be by the time we're done with this. So there's our sentiment. And then, yeah, this looks dry. So, so I have my outer piece that I need for to show the cup. My acetate is glued on. And then I love using these foam sheets. Where did mine go? Did it just stick to my big shot? Again, I lose everything. Oh, it's right here. Sorry, y'all. You're probably all going, it's right there, Susan. I think Margaret says she's so happy that these things are back. I'm so glad for you. And everything sold separately, so if there was something that was your favorite too. So, yeah, so now you can get it. Again, go under Throwback Thursday. Everything that was in the kit is there. All the add-ons are there. Even the Simple Strips coffee we released is there. And then the two new products are there, but they will say new. So if you are a person that did get the kit, uh, just know that that's there. And then don't forget, if you buy anything out of that category, you'll get the My True Colors cards, which I think they're so cool. So it's just kind of fun too to have that inspiration. Like if you come across the kit and you're like, I don't know, I wanna use this, but I don't know what to do. I think it's nice just to have that inspiration in there too of the cards. 
Okay, back to this. So again, I have the foam that we've already previously cut. It's got two release papers on either side of it. It's that, um, I believe these are eighth of an inch thick. I wanna say, yeah, eighth of an inch thick. So they're a good height for shakers. What I like to do so that I don't have to fight the wobbliness of the foam is that I only peel back a little bit of it and then I don't have to also fight the stickiness that's revealed. I'm gonna start, I will line this up on the top, so I only have just a little bit of that revealed, and I can kinda of line it up here at the bottom where it's not sticky. Use my fingers to kinda of control it to the top here. Lay it out, and then I can press that down. Keep that in place. Then I can reach in and peel this part back. And you know what? I don't have that very straight. I'm gonna peel it off. I also think with the acetate, it's very, very forgiving. With that acetate, as, as long as you let that acetate dry, ask me how I know, because I boo-booed uh, when I was putting my card together, and I didn't let the acetate dry, and then the, my acetate was peeling up too. So this is where I've gotta get my head in here, otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. And I obviously can't talk great. Right? Okay, much better, much better once I put my head over the top of it. Sorry if you got my hair in there. Uh, this is so detailed, you've got to. And you know what? Look, and we can fix this. I got a little bit of glue right here. If you take just a little bit of alcohol on, I'm going to spray it on our little cloth that we use to clean up the glass mats. I just sprayed a little bit of alcohol on there. I can rub some of that glue. I must have had glue seep out that was while I was drying. And then while I've got it, I can also wipe the inside of my acetate here quick. The reason why I wipe the acetate is with a little bit of rubbing alcohol is it makes it less staticky for all your shaker bits. So again, we only peeled that top portion back. So we have this and we can reach it. I can reach in there, peel that off, line it up. get it perfectly in place. So now we have the well that you need, and there's two ways to go about this. Um, there's, And I'll show you both here quick. I think I can, I brought in an extra little triangle tray just in case. Um, sometimes if I wanna see exactly what I'm doing, if I want to see that my hearts, especially like with I wanna use some of these smaller hearts in my shaker bits. I wanna make sure the die cut side is facing up. I will go like this and lay them all out the way I want. Again, I'm trying to get some of the big ones out of the way. I don't want those big, the really big hearts in there. I'll take a few, but I don't want a ton of them, especially not this largest one. Then I can lay everything right side up the way I want it, okay? And then what I will do is peel the backing off and I can, I want some of these little ones, they're all hiding at the bottom. So these are all little bits hearts, our, what we sell is our little TEs, little bits hearts. And I'll grab the die quick here in a sec. I just cut them out of sugar cube, nothing. If you have little bits like just little shaker elements in your craft room, use any of those. I just didn't have any, so I was like, well, I have the little bit's hearts die, and it cuts out like, I think, eight or nine little hearts when I cut it. How many is that? Two, four, six, eight. Yes, eight hearts. I will have plenty to fill in my cup here. So two ways to do it. One, you can peel, just peel like part of the backing off, hover it so you can center it over the top. You can also do like what we have done before in the past, which is, you just, you, here, I think that's the way I'm gonna do it. Even though my hearts won't be perfect, it'll be okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Let me grab this. I will put, I'm gonna put all these bits, cause that's what I wanted, into my little pour spout thing. So if I wanted to cluster those all there, I would just peel off my backing and place it over the top. That's one way to go about it. I've, I make shaker cards like that all the time. But something Taylor does, and a lot of people really find helpful, is again, we're gonna peel just a portion of this up, 
and across the top here, I am not going to pull that apart. I'm actually just gonna rip it. So if I take my backing and I just rip that part off, so I only have this exposed, but not that, because that will be where we funnel in our shaker bits. So let me hover this over the top to line this up again. But again, if you wanted to just put all your stuff, pile it down the middle and lay it on top, I do that all the time. It just kind of depends. But do you remember how we only, for the cup, we tore off that top piece? That's still not sticky. And then we can open up our shaker and dump right into it. So, and being as I already laid everything out on my card to kind of get a visual, I know this is the right amount of shaker bits that I want. So I can just funnel them in there like that. Shake it around. It looks like it, most everything stayed upright. I think I want just a smidge more of my little shaker bits. I like to shake them into something or use a scoop or something because then I can control how much is going in because I've said, okay, this looks nice. I like this amount. I'm going to move these bigger ones off for this time. And I can add it. That way I have full control of how much I'm adding. I don't like to fill it all the way full. I want things, I want that motion and that movement. So it's completely up to you how much or how little you want to add. This is probably enough. I might add just a smidgey more. I'm not going to use all of that. There we go. Then I can take whatever I didn't use here and funnel it back in. But I find I have a lot more control if I put it in like a little triangle tray if you got those from the advent calendar or if you have a little scoop i love the sorry about my phone sue she thought it was her son calling i have an appointment with my one of my twins today and i was waiting for them to call and of course they called right now <laughs> but i will call them back when i'm done but we have an appointment later on today for uh surgery so i'm like eh, just want to make sure that I didn't miss some and I didn't think about it. So I apologize, Sue, <laughs> that you went running for your phone or if anyone else did. So all we'll have to do, being as we have that backing in there still, is reach in and if you're a person that likes tweezers, you can reach in and grab it with the tweezers. But do you see how I can just pull that then? And then pull that off. And then there's, see, squish it. And I always say, I always go all the way around my shaker with my finger just to make sure I have it all in place because sometimes you'll miss a spot and then you have pieces running out. So that's our shaker. Okay, so who at the beginning said they needed help? Can you follow that one? How did we do? I'll wait for response. No worries, thanks for letting me by. Don't tell my boss about the phone call. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more texture to the handle here. I just like adding that just a little bit with the toffee. I feel like it gives it some depth and dimension. So we'll add just a little bit to that. All right, then I'll clean that up. We don't wanna have toffee running around here. That will be our handle for the back of our card. Grab, grab a little bit of our Barely Arts glue. I thought the coffee cup looked a little bare. Um, you could easily go ahead, if you didn't add the handle, add uh, a wrap with a little um, sleeve. You could always add that to it, but of course you wouldn't obviously want to add your handle um, to make this card up. Add a crimped sleeve to that. But I was going to go ahead and that whole thought of the you know, you can do it, said coffee. I thought it, I thought that one really like screamed like, let's put the um, sun or the rays of that pierce plate in the background. Uh, this one though, I'm gonna use the creamer one just cause I think that's funny too. So I did go ahead before I went live and I cut the pierce plate or the cut and pierce rays plate out of uh, some saltwater taffy and I do want to put a little dimension because I put this card together and I like it, but I think adding a little bit of ink blending around the edges will really help. So I brought saltwater taffy, but I also have a confetti cake 
ink pad nearby in case this isn't dark enough for my liking. I will put that black, intense black frame around it. So I need to kind of come in with it. So if I, ever I feel like a die cut looks flat or a background looks flat, adding a little color to the background really helps. And I think I might do as I was thinking and grab my confetti cake. If you're a heavy hand, you'll probably be just fine with the saltwater taffy. I am going to go very light handed with my confetti cake. I'll go around the edges. But if you're a heavy hand, I would stick with the saltwater taffy on this. way around here and try to keep the center light but again this outermost part will be covered up by my frame so that was a little bit of confetti cake but like I said if you're a heavier hand when you ink blend I would just stick with saltwater taffy just to give you that dimension that um, little bit of extra so let's clean that up so I don't have that in my way and then I also, ahead of time, took our infinity frame that creates the frame and frame and frame and frame and cut it out of the intense black cardstock that TE sells. I really love that stuff. Make sure when you use the infinity frame that you absolutely use the shim uh, when you do yours. I must have missed that on my corner here. I might have not had it over top of the shim, but the shim will make it so it comes apart perfectly. Let me see, is this the one I want? Nope, one down. I need the next one down. Let me grab one more frame here. I can hear everyone downstairs in the studio has arrived for shopping today. So that's the frame I'm gonna put around it. So let's grab my Barely Arts glue again. So that was the second largest infinity frame that that makes. But again, if you're using the infinity frame, it's a cutting plate, make sure you use a shim. I can't get mine to cut perfectly without the shim, so just make sure you use the shim if you're using these. Okay, a little bit of Barely Arts glue. Line this up all the way around. I like to check this from the back because I know they're the exact same size. So as long as they're lined up, that'll be perfect. There we go. Set that to dry for a minute. I'm going to use the creamer, being the creamer sentiment. I thought I liked coffee, turns out I liked creamer. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. I want it to be a little bit wonky with my cup. I thought that would be cute on my card. So I'm gonna go ahead, being as I'm putting it on acetate, I'm gonna put a little bit more Barely Arts glue in the background. Set that on there. I'm gonna make sure it's straight. Okay, I love, I do have to have my coffee first thing in the morning. What about the rest of you? Taylor, uh, Taylor drinks energy drinks because she doesn't like coffee, but I do love coffee so much. I have, I have it in the, one cup in the morning and one cup in the afternoon. I feel like I'm that. I always have to tell myself I can't have my second cup before one because I would drink them both first thing in the morning if I could. So do you see that? I really like that ink blending. I wish I had done it on that one. So um, just adds just a little bit of something, brings your eye into the center. Put a little bit more liquid glue behind my behind my cup. Yes, coffee, vanilla latte, yes. I had started to like those nitro coffees from Starbucks until my daughter said to me one day, do you know how much ca how much caffeine is in there? Because I'm always on their case about how much caffeine. Diet Dr. Pepper, yes. But those nitros are well up over 200 milligrams. So I backed off of those. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize. I told my husband about it too. So now he's always saying, oh yeah, I know, I can have those. I'm like, they're just every once in a while things. And 
might go with the smaller. I used the bigger heart for that one, and I think this time I'm gonna go with the smaller one. Back to these little bits, hearts that I pre-die cut. Put them on here, and then I absolutely, absolutely love the little bits, black rhinestones, and I am such a fan of the white ones. That's just, just sharing. Those came out recently too. So we will use a little bit of glue for those. I'm gonna go ahead and place my rhinestones too while I'm at it, because then once I get my glue undone, I'll be ready to go with both things. All right, I love these. I, I, I think I like them so much because they just don't add a lot of bulk to my card so I can get them through the mail and not worry about them being too high. I think that's why I like them so much. Plus they're just, just a little bit of something here and there to add. Okay, so I like to place mine and then I go and glue. I don't know, are you guys like people that just know where you're going with them and you just dot them here and there? Let's see, I'm trying to see if anyone else has to have their coffee too like I do. I actually will, it's bad. I will get a headache if I, like the last live that I had with you guys, I was fighting a very bad cold or whatever it was. Um, and I didn't have caffeine the one day because I was in bed and I was like, oh, I got a headache before noon. So I do love my coffee. So this kit and these pieces that are now for sale are near and dear to my heart. Let's add one more dot over here. Okay, now I will just move things out of the way and put down my glue too, now that I know that I'm happy with my placement. And then place, put everything in place. Again, these were the sugar cube cut from the little bits hearts. There we go. Last one. Move that a little bit. There we go. And then it just goes on a sugar cube card base. Awesome. Trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. I think a lot of people love coffee. Two cups every morning, Cynthia. I. I don't know, my parents are always warning me. As you get older, you can't have coffee anymore, they always say. So, um, trying to make it so that I can pace myself for later. Let's grab a white card base, put that on. I do love, can you see the difference in the ink blending? I really love the ink blend that I added around the outside. So if ever you're thinking something looks flat, if you can, go back and add um, blending. Just brings your eye in, gives things texture and depth. Well, there we go, our coffee for the day. That will not keep you awake, but will make you smile, right? I hope, Deborah, that you try a shaker in um, whichever way, whether you like to funnel it in from the top or you like to um, just lay a pile and then put your piece over the top of it. Either way, it all it all works, and sometimes it's maybe maybe even making yourself a list of you know cut the frame, cut the acetate, like kind of reminding yourself how to put them together. So let me grab some of these cards. I showed you the crimp piece for this one today, and this, and um, yeah. I hope you have a great day. I hope you go to the Throwback Thursday. Again, remember you'll get the My True Color cards if you buy anything out of the um, Throwback Thursday, but you have to do it before next week, Thursday, and we upload the new Throwback Thursday. So go find your paper crimper and um, make some cards. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a great day.